Welcome to this QuickBooks 2020 tutorial for beginners on how to enter a bill in QuickBooks 2020. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. Okay, so the, the way that you enter a bill in QuickBooks 2020 has not changed a whole lot from previous versions. QuickBooks 2019, 18, 17, even going back to the really, really early versions, uh, there are maybe a couple minor changes, but not uh, a lot of big ones. So. Okay, so the process for entering bills in QuickBooks 2020 and in any QuickBooks version is uh, you want to make sure that you follow a certain process with bills. Okay, and what I mean by that is the, your business will get bills, whether it's online or, uh, you know, um, uh, in the mail, whatever the case may be. Okay, and you want to make sure that you enter the bills appropriately and then pay the bills appropriately. So in this video, I'm going to go through how to enter those bills. All right, so you see here is an option, an icon to enter a bill. Uh, you can also go up here to the vendor's drop down menu and go to enter bills. Okay, either way is fine. All right, so we're going to assume in your scenario that you get a bill and it's going to be either electronic, uh, in the mail, etc. So you're going to go to this screen here and you'll see you have a couple of options. First of all, this will default to bill. You want to leave that there. Then you have this checked off bill received. Leave that there as well. So the first thing you need to do is choose the vendor. Okay, so we're going to say that the vendor was, we'll say it's Amazon. All right. Now, Amazon, uh, it'll show up if you have an address in your customer or in your vendor list it will show the address and the name, so it will default here. So the first important thing you want to make sure uh, that can really mess up your, your books and your financial statements if you don't do this right, put in the bill date right here, okay? It will default to today's date, but you want to make sure that you put the bill date in there. So let's say this bill was as of 1130, okay? So you see you want it in there in the month or the date on the bill for when this occurred. This will help keep your financial statement straight. All right, the next important thing you wanna do is you wanna put in the bill number, the invoice number. So if there is an invoice number, you wanna make sure you put this in. The reason for this is because a lot of times in business, you're gonna get duplicate bills uh, from vendors, okay? And when you put in this reference number, QuickBooks will check and say, okay, have you entered this bill before? So you get consistent on entering the invoice number. And when you enter that, uh, again, if we entered this again down the road, it's going to tell us that a duplicate bill exists. This is kind of a safety net to make sure you don't double pay bills. All right, so the next one is going to be the amount due. We're going to say 50. And then we're going to say the due date. All right, so let's say the due date is December 30th. It could be December 15th. Whatever the due date on the bill is, you want to put that in here. All right, now terms is going to be what terms did they give you? Did they give you 30 days, 15, due on receipt, 2%, 10, net 30, okay, which is a discount uh, type of term, all right, or, you know, whatever it is, you want to put in that due date and the re or the terms, and the reason is it will automatically calculate your due date there. You just want to make sure that that matches the automa automatic calculation. Now, you can put in a memo if you want to, uh, totally up to you. And then down here, you've got two tabs. You've got expenses and items. For most bills, they're going to go under the expenses tab. So you're going to choose what kind of expense this is. We're going to say that at Amazon, we bought office supplies. Uh, the amount, $50, it'll automatically default there. And then you can put in a memo. And over here, if you want to assign this to a customer, uh, or bill it to the customer. And if you do class tracking, you're going to put that in over here. All right. Now, if you need to split this, so let's say this was office supplies 30 and 20 of it was to something else, let's say dues and subscriptions, you can do what's called split the transaction right here. So you're splitting it between two accounts to total $50, all right? Now, I wanna go back to the tab here. So most of the time your bills are gonna go in here, but if you have inventory or other items that you sell to your customers, you will put it under the items tab. Okay, that's a completely different topic. I just wanna go through the basics of entering a bill. 
All right, so once you get all this information in, all of this is right, you can go to save and new uh, or save and close. So we're gonna say save and close and it's gonna give me a warning that I did not, uh, let's say that we'll put in the password. Okay, so you've changed the terms for Amazon for this transaction. That's because we changed the terms here that they defaulted to. We'll say yes. And we don't have class uh, a class assigned. That's okay for this example. So now we've entered a bill. Now where that goes is you want to go to vendors and pay bills. And you're going to see here's the bill that we just entered. All right. So there's a whole process to this entering bills, paying bills, and, and you want to make sure you follow the whole process. This is a, this is a part of the process of uh, on the front end, making sure you enter those bills appropriately. Any questions whatsoever, any comments, feel free to leave those below. Uh, head over to the QuickBooks University. I, I walk you through the entire process as a member of entering the bill, paying the bill, and sort of this entire accounting function within your business to make sure you get the right financials. And those are super important because they help you make better business decisions. Head over there now, qbuniversity.org.